Hi, everybody. How are you? Yeah, we don't need the round of applause. I don't need the mic either, okay? Um, I'll shut this off right. so we don't get bothered by the sound. If you could all, all right. put your phones down. Sorry, because we have um, people on Zoom. On Zoom so okay, this is Zoom. You're in Korea? Can you hear me? <laughs> yes? Are you Filipino? No, you're Korean, right? I'm just teasing you. Wake up. Just checking that you're there and you can hear me. Okay. So I really don't like talking with the mic, okay? So uh, maybe someone can hold the mic for me, or I can put the mic down somewhere. Oh, here. Do you... No, I don't want a mic at all. Uh, uh... <laughs> but I'm okay, okay, okay. We're doing this for Mr. Korea, okay? Uh, all right. So put your phone down. Put your phones down and listen to me. Only keep your phone up if you actually want to record me or take my photo. Um, my grandfather, I'm told, came to Hong Kong in 1952. He worked here for five years before he started Sam's Taylor in 1957. Now, I'm told this. I wasn't alive in 1952, and I wasn't alive in 1957. I can, though, count for the last 44 years of my history because, gosh, I'm old. I'm 44 years old. When my grandfather came here in 1952, he could not speak any English whatsoever. Zero English. When he opened up Sam's Taylor in 1957, Hi. can you hear me, Mr. Korea? <laughs> yeah? It's June. June? Yes. Um, when, he came, when he opened up Sam's in 1957, he spoke very little English and very little Cantonese. And most of his clients at the time were British people, whether they were British soldiers here, British expatriates here, British police officers here, British doctors here, British secretaries here. Most of his clients, if not all, in 1957 and in the 60s and in the 70s were British people. Now, he was a man who hardly spoke English. So you know how he broke down barriers? He had very large bottles of San Miguel beer, big glass bottles like this. And when the British people came into the shop, he'd have these mugs, glass mugs, and he would pour San Miguel beer for them, and he'd give it to them. And that's how he broke down the barrier. So as soon as the British person walked in and they encountered a much smaller man who could hardly speak English, he'd serve them beer. And they drank beer, and suddenly my grandfather was their best friend. They absolutely loved him. 60 years later, I have my own beer, which I've handed out to all of you guys. It's a Sam's Taylor beer. We've been serving beer for 64 years. A few years ago, I realized that, you know, if we've been serving beer for 60 years, why are we serving San Miguel or Carlsberg or Heineken? I should have my own beer. We live in the modern era now. I should have a Sam's Taylor beer. And now we have a Sam's Taylor beer. And when people walk into my shop, they're generally from all over the world. They're also from Hong Kong, especially now. Nobody can walk into my shop that's from elsewhere in the world. Only Hong Kongers walk into my shop. And how do I break down barriers with them? In many ways. I don't think I have enough time to talk about all those ways. But one of them is my beer, a Sam's Taylor beer, envisioned by an Indian guy living in Hong Kong, made by a Hong Kong brewery, Young Masters, that was founded by an Indian guy who is living in Hong Kong. His name is Rohit Duggar. I have been here my entire life. I went to Baptist Church Kindergarten. I don't think that's affiliated with the university. I went to Kowloon Junior School, and then I went to King George V School. I then left Hong Kong, and I went to New York University in America. I lived and worked in London, but primarily my entire career, I've spent working in Hong Kong, whether it be for Sam Stinner or other firms. In my entire lifetime here, whether I interned at Merrill Lynch or Russell Reynolds, or worked at Herbert Smith, which, were, which is a big British law firm, or worked at Sam Taylor and walked around Hong Kong. I have very rarely, ever, 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 <laughs> uh, been inflicted with any sort of racism or discrimination. I don't believe that we are intrinsically anywhere near a racist society in any ways whatsoever. That if you are subjected to any racist or discriminatory behavior, it's not from a racist or discriminative person. It might just be from a bad person. I don't consider myself an ethnic minority, okay? And I was born here, and I've been here longer, double the time, than you guys have been alive. You're all very young, you know what I mean? You're all 21 and above, I'm 44. So I've lived double your life, and I've lived double the life in Hong Kong. I don't consider my, myself an ethnic minority. And the ethnic minority term is a very new term. I hear it from your generation, okay? And I have some great advice for all of you. I don't believe it is the majority's responsibility to pave the way forward for the minority, okay? That is just nonsense. Population numbers 
uh, attest to that. You have 1.4 billion people in China alone. Uh, 1.3 billion people in India, 300 million people in the United States, hundreds of millions of people in countries like Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Indonesia, Russia, etc., etc. Okay, it's time that ethnic minorities, minorities, if they want to be accepted, they need to pave the way forward. You know what I mean? They can't be leave, looking in the other direction and 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 harp on about discrimination. Now, honestly, this is a topic that I don't want to touch because I don't have great experience in it. What I have great experience is in, is in assimilation, okay? And I know it sounds cheesy, but if we all want to get along, we need to assimilate, and that takes work from both sides. And generally, I think in the overwhelming majority of cases, there is no real discrimination from any direction. I think Hong Kong people especially, and I'm going to speak specifically about Hong Kong because I'm here to talk about Hong Kong. Hong Kong people assimilate very well. Hong Kong people are very welcome. Okay? This term ethnic minority is a very new term. Discrimination is overwhelmingly small. I have a huge team, primarily of Chinese people, that work for me, that work with me. But I have many Indians working with me. I've had many Sri Lankans in the past. I currently have a lot of Nepalese and a lot of Filipinos working for me. So yeah, you know, I've been to the United Nations in, 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 in the course of my 20 years. Yes, of course, I'm exaggerating. Well, I think assimilation is key. Learning is key. When I lived in London in 1999, okay, I remember the story. I met a guy from Austria, and I said to him straight away, I said, do you know Anton Polster? Now, in 1999, we had no Sky TV and cable TV and now TV and and all these satellites and stuff, right? So there was no Premier League soccer or any sort of soccer beaming around the world. But I go to an Austrian guy. I was like, do you know Anton Polster? He goes, yeah. Suddenly he's my best friend, this guy, because I, he meets an Indian guy in London who knows Anton Polster. Now, I may have read about Anton Polster because he was a great soccer player, but I never watched any soccer that was Austrian. I was only watching English soccer at the time. What's the point of me telling you this? When I joined Sam Still in the year 2000, I would use the pop culture that I knew, okay, to try and relate to people from other countries. For the most of my career, except for the last two years, and even during the last two years, my work is with foreign people from abroad. Yes, I have Hong Kong clientele, but the overwhelming majority of my clientele are from abroad, and I have a lot of clients, okay? I have a successful business, all right? So I use pop culture, whether it's a soccer player, an NFL player, a basketball player, a singer, something I've learned in the news, something I've read in the media, to break down barriers very, 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 very quickly. You come from Kazakhstan? Kazakhstan. So I did some work with uh, the Kazakhstani Consulate General. Someone comes to my shop, they're from Kazakhstan, I say, hey, you know what? I made a suit for the Kazakhstani Consulate General. They straight away drop their barrier, they drop their shield a little bit. And I can give you many, many, many more examples. We talked about, one of you here talked about language and perhaps apps, and I thought apps. I'm like, yes, language is difficult, but we have all the answers in our phone. I had a Russian, two couples come in. So this is maybe four, five, six years ago. They were Russian, they cannot speak any English. Sorry, uh, any English whatsoever. And I'm like, oh my goodness, and I don't speak any Russian whatsoever. So I'm like, okay, forget it. Was it Google Translate or whatever was in my iPhone? I was like, I spoke into it, or I typed into it that time. Now you can just speak into it. I think it was me typing into it. And I presented it to them, and they could read it translated in Russian. Suddenly, they're my best friends. I'm the only friend in Hong Kong now, because they now can type to me in Russian. The hotel they went to could have been the Ritz Carlton, could have been anywhere. Didn't think about typing to them in Russian, but I did. I typed to them in, Russia, in English, it translated to Russian, they typed back to me. You break down barriers slowly, okay? You make yourself accepted. If you feel that you have a problem, then don't just blame the person. Don't say, you know, this person's in a box. Because then you are being discriminatory. If you're constantly shouting discrimination against other people, then you are being discriminatory. Before you shout discrimination, before you blame others, see if you can help them break down the barrier that they're putting up against you. Try yourself first. Forgive my language, I'm a child of the 70s and 80s, 
but don't be a baby. You know what I mean? Try to help bridge that gap first yourself. It could be pop culture. It could be sport. It could be music. It could be a trip that you made to Paris that you can talk to a Parisian about. Prior to these apps, prior to iPhones, I had an old French couple come to my shop. They cannot speak a word of English. I didn't have laptops at that time. We had desktops. I had to take them into the office, figure out something on the internet. It was so slow and difficult, but I'm typing English into the, into the website. The website's giving French. Suddenly, they're very excited. Suddenly, they trust me. Suddenly, I'm their best friends in Hong Kong, okay? There's a way forward. Don't lose yourselves to the generation that's come before you, which is not my generation, which blames and blames and blames, and then accepts themselves as a minority, and then accepts themselves as being discriminated against. Don't fall into that trap. You're too young and you're too bright for that. Build bridges. Break down barriers yourself. Don't box yourself in and don't box others in. I could talk forever, trust me. I'm not used to talking for five minutes. I'm not used to talking for 10 minutes. I'm used to talking for 90 minutes, okay? But before I go on, do you have any questions for me? Come on, you're brave and you go to the best university in Hong Kong. Ask me a question, you first. Tell me something, ask me anything. Don't be scared, stand up and ask me a question. Uh, me, focus on me. Where is your family from? Uh, I'm half Filipino and half Pakistani. Fantastic. Yeah. You were born in Hong Kong? Yeah. Do you feel racially discriminated against? No. Ever, ever, ever? Not ever, ever, but for the majority, I don't feel discriminated. Do you agree with anything that I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. My advice to you, right, is you're better off being an ambassador for Pakistan and the Philippines than sitting around accepting people's discrimination towards you. You should take anybody's bad behavior, use that as an opportunity to be an ambassador for Philippines, Pakistan, and Hong Kong, and go and educate them. Who's Chinese here? Who is Chinese? Born in Hong Kong? Have you ever racially discriminated against anybody? Yes, I did. Well, how have you done so? Tell me. He stole my phone. He stole your phone. What did you say to him? Okay. And he was a foreigner? I mean, Pakistan or I don't know. Did he steal your phone because he was a Pakistani? Or did he steal your phone because he's a thief? He's a thief. So report him to the police. And forgive all Pakistanis. They're not all thieves. I promise you. I guarantee you that. Anybody have a question for me? You guys are so shy? Professor, would you like to ask him something? <laughs> I actually, yeah, I would like to know more regarding, so, sorry, let me finish it here. Right. Thank you so much for... No, 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 no need for that. Yeah. I'm grateful to be here. Tell me, right. ask me a question. Uh, my question, actually, what do you think about the videos? Do you think they actually present you well, or in what ways do you think um, my students can improve? I'm just happy to be presented. Okay, uh, I don't care how I'm presented, I'm happy to be presented. It's better to be relevant than completely irrelevant. My advice to you all, okay, you might not like it. Even though we are 1.4 billion people in China and 1.3 billion people in India, English is the key. If you are going to bridge every gap and break down every barrier and succeed in this world in any ways, going back to my grandfather's day in 1957, with a big bottle of San Miguel, to my day here in 2021. You must learn to speak English well. The way the US dollar is the currency of the world, the financial currency, the English language is the currency of the world. It's the communication currency. So that is my best advice to you, speak English well. When your students came to see me, I did not care that English might, may have been their secondary language, their second language. It didn't matter to me. But not everyone is like me. Not everyone is like me. Not everyone is willing to understand and take their time to understand and make other people comfortable. So for me, it's irrelevant, you know what I mean? But you can't speak English at all. I'll find a way to communicate with you. But the overwhelming majority of people are not like that. They're not thinking that way yet. So my best advice is to speak English well, and that's why 
the three groups who came to see me, I told you first and foremost, and I learned that from the first group. Who was the first group? Not you guys. Yeah, you were the first group, was it? No. You were the second group. That was group three. I can't remember. This was the first group, was it? Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, Mr. Korea, you were the first group, right? Yes, I think it was part of the first group. I said, uh, yes, be I think we were the first group. I said, be comfortable, be comfortable, be comfortable, be comfortable, be comfortable, be comfortable. Ask me anything. Not everybody's going to be like that. So in order to succeed, learn English. Forget about stereotypes, forget about discrimination. Learn to speak English. Automatically, I guarantee you won't be discriminated against. It's simple. You suddenly speak the person's language. What have they got to discriminate against you? You act first to break down that barrier. If someone is intrinsically racist, then it's a different thing. Okay? You speak English perfectly, you understand the culture perfectly, and they're still terrible towards you, then it's a bad person. Racism isn't endemic here in any ways whatsoever. Thank you for your question, Professor. Director, do you have a question for me? Thank you. No? Anybody else have a question? So then I'm going to say goodbye to you guys, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Go thank ahead. you so much. I actually have a souvenir. For oh, thank you. you. And thanks for your souvenirs. No problem. Yeah. I don't know if you guys <laughs> drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol, actually. You know what I mean? I haven't had a drink in 10 years. But uh, these are in the corporate colors. These are my grandfather's scissors. That's my measuring tape. If you do enjoy drinking, chill the beer, have a drink, take a photo, post it to your Instagram stories, and tag me, okay? That's your cheers to me, okay? And, and then, I'll, then I'll remember you, and I'll be very grateful to you guys. If you don't drink, give it to your best friend or your family member and whatever. Uh, and if nobody drinks, just keep it as a souvenir. And that's basically it. You may not like me, you may not like what I have to say, but I've shown you that there's a, there's a way forward to communicate with everybody. You may not agree with what I have to say, but I just got my message across to you. I didn't plan to write anything. I didn't know what I was gonna say. Am I a brave person? Yes. Do I have a lot of experience? Yes. Will you get there? 100%. Believe in yourself. Fix yourself first before you worry about society and government fixing others. That's the main thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really mean that. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. So may I also invite uh, Dr. Lam and also uh, my students. Could you please come up? Can we take a good photo together? Anything you want. I'd be delighted to. Thank you. Um, okay, I don't bite. Don't worry. I know so my voice please, is loud, uh, but I don't so bite. We need to Thank you so much. Thank you. Director, thank you so much. So please um, try to... Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, whatever, you, you're the boss. Wait a minute. 
Can we do a light one? Okay, just what is light one? Light. A light one. Light. 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 Yeah. Okay. Like like on Facebook, I get it. One more. One, two, three. Um. Here, here, one, two, three. Okay. Okay.